Good morning, everyone. Welcome to class lecture 15. So before I start in, are there any questions about anything in the material we've talked about in chapter four? Uh, the makeup quiz will get come whenever the grades on that will be done when, as soon as we can get them done. When you take a makeup, things are not done as fast as everything else, but I would suspect it should be done shortly. Are there any other questions? Oh, well, in that case, let's jump in. The announcements. You can't find more information on makeup quizzes. Makeup quizzes are allowed only in very certain circumstances, which were discussed at the beginning of the course. You can go back and refer to that. We don't do makeup quizzes for um, simple. There wasn't a makeup quiz for anyone. The makeup quizzes were for people who had medical emergencies and could not be there and have written excuses indicating there were medical emergencies. That's not something offered on a standard basis because it requires me to make up a whole new exam and TAs to grade a whole new exam. Um, so I'm sorry if you thought that, oh, gee, I can do that so I can get a better grade. Um, I wish that it were that easy for everyone, but it isn't. Okay. So let's talk about Life Now. Life Now says that there will be a quiz on Thursday, and this is quiz four. Now you can look at it and go, oh, another quiz, or you could look at it and go, whoo, this is quiz four. There's only one more left. Um, whatever. Uh, so uh, it will be on Thursday during the regular class time, just like all the other quizzes. Uh, 1045 to 1205 submitted via grade scope 12 by 1235. Um, I want to remind you once again that uh, emailing after 1235 saying, gee, I couldn't upload or gee, I couldn't scan in time and it's late, but, but here it is in an email, is not a good excuse. And the reason it's not a good excuse is because if as you're supposed to, you start doing your scanning and emailing um, and turning into PDF at 12.05, then we should be getting an email long before 12.35, not late. So we should get the email saying, I had problems. So if you really have problems and can't get it done to upload to Gradescope, we still expect to see it by 12.35. Okay, unless, as I said, there's a, some sort of emergency, medical emergency is one, but there can be a few others that are acceptable. In that case, you send an email to the teaching staff as soon as possible. Email, by that I mean you send it to, to via Piazza. Okay, there is a quiz review today from five to six held by Nancy. She already sent out a, a announcement in Canvas to everybody. So you should have that uh, wherever you read your Canvas announcements. Uh, whenever you read them, you should read them at least once a day, if not more often. Um, this one is held by Nancy today from five to six, and then her regular office hours will continue on to seven. Um, on tomorrow, there will be a quiz review with Ben from three to four with regular offices continuing from four to five. Uh, you can attend them virtually, of course, by going to respective Zooms, links, and passwords listed by them. Um, you can also, uh, we upload the discussions and, and the um, quiz reviews so that you can get to the quiz reviews via um, YouTube. They'll be there. But remember, if you go via YouTube, you don't get your questions answered. Your questions are answered only if you're there live in the Zoom. What will be covered on quiz four? Uh, in sections 
4.1 to 4.5 is the material we're talking about in the text. And that is what is covered on the quiz. Um, it's, so those are the sections in the book and it's whatever was covered uh, during class lectures, whatever was covered in the pre-recorded videos for which the slides are always available um, and what's ever in the book. Okay, so those are the sections that'll be on the quiz. Okay, so let's jump into the material now. Are there any questions at all on the quiz or any of the other issues I talked about, the other announcements? Okay, let's go over um, some material in chapter four before we launch into the new work on combinatorics. So practice problem one says, uh, let A be the set one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to talk about a, re, uh, a relation R. And here's a hypothesis. And you have to tell me whether this implication is true or false. And if it's true, you got to prove it. If it's false, you have to give me a counter example. So here it is. If R is a reflexive relation on A, and S is a symmetric relation on A, then the relation R intersect S, remember R intersect S, the relation is a set of uh, pairs from A cross A, and the relation is a subset of the set of all pairs in the cross product, then the relation R intersect S is both reflexive and symmetric. Is that true? Is that false? And I'm, Delighted if anybody wants to take a stab at answering that. Yes, not that, not right now, huh? Okay. It should be both, right? It should be false, right? Well, I didn't, you're asking me a question. I said, tell me an answer and tell me why. It should be is not an answer. Come on. Well, it should be because if it's intersecting both, um, since it's an intersection, it means it exists in both sets, whatever comes out. So that means that by definition of intersection, they, the resulting set will be both reflexive and symmetric. Yes. So why is that not uh, a why isn't it true? You're saying it is true that that you are. Okay, go. So I thought you said it was false. I'm sorry. So you're saying if it if R is reflexive and S is symmetric on A, then R intersect S is both reflexive and symmetric. You are right by the definition of set theory. So Here's somebody else who said, I don't think the intersection will yield any results if I understand correctly. Well, it always yields some result. Well, it may yield some results. So Stephen, you're closer to the answer on this one. Dane, what's your question? I don't have a specific counterexample yet, but I don't think that it would be true since even though X, even though an elements would be contained in both R and S if it's in its intersection. That doesn't mean that if, uh, if it's contained in S, for example, that its opposite will be contained in R intersect S. It could be contained Very in a part good. of S, which is not That's an intersecting That's excellent R, reasoning. And vice versa. That's, uh, here, let's give an example. So let's let R be equal to, well, we need reflexive. So we need one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, and five, five. Okay, so it has to have that. And that's the definition of reflexive. So let's see, what else can there be in here? Suppose we say we have one, two, and four, five is in there as well. Now, with the addition of those two pairs, it doesn't change. R is still reflexive. Let S then, and now S is supposed to be symmetric. It doesn't have to be reflexive. 
So suppose S is equal to 1, 1, 3, 4, 4, 3, um, 1, 2, and 2, 1. Now, is S symmetric? Yes, is S is symmetric. Why is S symmetric? S is symmetric because it has three, four in it, so it must have four, three. It has one, two in it, so it must have two, one. Now it has one, one in it, and you know that's fine. That doesn't change symmetry since one, one is there. So what is in our intersect S? Our intersect S. Well, one, one is in there. What else is in there? I guess one, two is in there. Is there anything else in there? Four, three. Four, three, well, that's good. Is four, three in uh, R? It's the last element. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a five. My bad. Sorry that it's so hard to read. Okay, so it's just the, the, the two elements, one, one, and one, two, that are in the relation. So it's neither symmetric not, and it's not um, reflexive. It's also not irreflexive. Is it anti-symmetric? Yep, because one, two is in there, but not two, one. So, and it's not, and it is, is anti-symmetric. Someone asked, what if, if R intersect S is the empty set? Well, if R intersect S is the empty set, let's ask about that. Remember, it's a relation on A and for it to be, for it to be symmetric, uh, the, you'd have to have all the pairs, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, and five, five in it. So it's not symmetric. I mean, it's not reflexive. Um, it is irreflexive in the sense that there's no one one or in there at all. Okay. And that's true that, that any of the elements of A are not in there as a pair. Um, it's both symmetric and anti-symmetric in the sense that there are no elements. It's, it's both because it's empty and it's transitive because it's empty. Okay, so the empty set is just all things to all people there. Uh, excuse me? In this case, I said it's not irreflexive here. Not irreflexive because it has one one in there. Yes, you have a question, Faze. Wally, yeah. Bar, binky, binky, uh, boy. Wally, binky. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, okay, so I just want to make sure the R is re reflex reflexive relation, but it, even it have the two, say the one, two, and the four, five, this two is not a reflexive, but you see the relation R is still be the reflexive? Relation R is reflexive because for every element in A, in capital A, if A is an element in capital A, the pair A comma A is in R. That makes it reflexive. Okay, so that uh, all the elements in A is in here and that they are all- All the elements have to have that. So this set of elements make it reflexive. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay. 
And for symmetric, we have to have, remember the definition of symmetric is if A and B are in capital A and A, B is in, this is A not equal to B, and A and B are in the relation R, well, in this case, let's say S, then B, A is an element of S as well. Okay. Good. All right, let's do another practice problem. Practice problem two, okay. Let A in this case be the power set of the set consisting of the four elements, one, two, four, and nine. Someone asks, wouldn't one, one not be enough to make it not irreflexive? Because we only check ordered pairs where A is not equal to B. Um, no, no, irreflexive says that irreflexive says irreflexive says for all A in A, then A, A is not in R or S or whatever. Okay, so if you have some pairs that are in the relation AA and some that are not, then it's neither reflexive nor irreflexive. Okay, when you see for all, that says everyone. Okay. All right, so let's look about, let's look at an ordering. So let's remind ourselves something about ordering. Tell me what the definition of a partial order is. Partial order. Are they reflexive, antisymmetric, and transitive? Yes. So partial orders are rats. Reflexive, antisymmetric, and transitive. What is a strong partial order? Is this the one where it's irreflexive? Yeah, and what else? Uh, a and T, anti-symmetric and, yes. and transitive. It doesn't make a very good word, but it's IAT. Irreflexive, anti-symmetric, and transitive. So if you want to know what a strong partial order is, we define it as, for example, saying uh, A is less than B. So less than or equal defines a partial order. A less than B is irreflexive then and, and um, Is this the same thing as a strict partial order? Yes, I'm sorry. I used the wrong word. This is a strict. You're right. I have to use the words in this class. Strict partial order. Very good. Thank you. OK, what's a total order? Ah. The total order is a rat with an additional property. And for A, B in the set A, then A is related to B or is in the relation or B, A is in the relation. Okay.
what is a strict total order? Irreflexive instead of reflexive, but everything else the same? Yes, plus that property, okay? So those are the different kinds of orders that we have, okay? So let's let R1 be the set of all uh, pairs of subsets of A, S and T, such that for all A in S and for all B and T, A is less than or equal to B. David, you had a question. Yeah. So a total order, if A, B is in there, wouldn't also B, A be in there? Because no, it's for a total to order, it's either or. If it's an order, you can't have, remember orders, partial orders are anti-symmetric. Okay. So if, it's, so if it's a total order, if it's a partial order, it's already anti-symmetric. Okay, the cool, thanks. The additional difference, if you think, sometimes you can think of a tree, whatever design you have, you can think of a tree as being a uh, partial order where the bottom nodes are the higher up on, on the tree, we uh, attribute uh, less than or equal to as being it's higher or equal on the tree. So you have a partial order there. A total order you know, and a partial order, you have nodes that are totally not related to each other. But in a partial, in a total order, everything has to be related. It's like you just have one branch going up and down. Okay. Okay. So what we're looking at here is we're saying that for, if I have two subsets of a set A, okay, then we define this relation on the power set of A across the power set of A to be the relation that if they are related, if every element in A is less than or equal to every element in B. Okay, so for example, this means that if uh, we look at the pair of subsets, the set one, two is in the power set of A and the set nine is in the power set of A. And the pair of subsets where this is S and this is T are related since one is less than or equal to nine and two is less than or equal to nine. So that satisfies the definition that every element in S is less than or equal to every element in T. So it's in the relation. But 1, 4 doesn't have a relation with the set 2, 9, even though 1 is less than or equal to 2 and 4 is less than or equal to 9 because 4 is not less than or equal to 2. So the less than is not true for every element in S against every element in T. Okay? So that's the relation that it's being defined as. Okay? Um, so what do we have for this? Well, first of all, we know it's anti-symmetric. So, and then is A comma A in there? If I'm sorry, is S comma S in there? No, really, because every subset, every element, if I have an element S that's one, two against one, two, then um, two, oh yeah, it is, I'm sorry, no. Yeah, two is not less than or equal to one. It's not true. All elements in this are not less than or equal to all elements in it, okay? So now we're in for a strict 
partial order at best is a transitive. Well, yeah, if everything in a set S is less than or equal to everything in the set T and everything in the set T is less than or equal to everything in the subset W, then we see transitivity holds. If the mate, you guys are all into these pathological cases. What if the set contains one element? Could that map to itself? Well, they, yes, that's less than or equal to itself. So then it would be true. Um, hmm. So it's neither, it's not strict. No, it is still strict. Strict, remember, says that we have A not equal to B, then, nope, it says that AA is not in there. It is not a strict. So we really don't have a partial order at all. Okay, let's pick another one that's easier. The sum of the elements in S is less than or equal to the sum of the elements in T. What about that one? First of all, is it reflexive? Sure. So the second one is definitely reflexive. And it's reflexive because we have that less than or equal to there. Okay. The sum of the elements in S is definitely equal to the sum of the elements in S. So it's reflexive. Is it symmetric or anti-symmetric? Well, it's got to be anti-symmetric because if the sum of the elements in S is less than or equal to the sum of the elements in T, then it can't go the other way around. And finally, um, is it transitive? R1 is R1 and R, yeah, R1 is just a set in um, A cross A. We don't have what we need. So we have anti symmetric and we have transitive. So we can see that you can have one of the properties and not the other. You can have none of the properties, you can have lots of different things. The fourth requirement for a total order says that everything is related, okay? So what you would do for this case is you would take two subsets and you would add up the, the sum of their elements, okay? And you know now you have just an integer and you say, well, one of them is always less than or equal to the other. So that tells you that you have the other condition, the fourth condition, that any two subsets are related to each other. Okay? Okay, let's start talking about combinatorics. That's new stuff. Chapter five. So combinatorics, it asks the question, how many? How many ways can we do X? How many possible combinations are there? Okay, how do we know whether, um, whether it's a valid count? So we look at this and we say, how many has to do with there are two conditions that we care about and hence four combinations. So one condition is are repetitions allowed Okay. And the other question is, does order matter? Does the order in which they're picked matter? Okay. So uh, from that, we come up with four definitions. Okay. So the first one is something called an ordered list. And an ordered list allows you to have repetitions, but order matters. Okay, so these kinds of problems are always stated like um, 
I'm having a contest in which I pick a, a winner and a second winner, and the same person can be both winner and second winner, but order matters. Okay, there are two different prizes. So this is the kind of problem that you say, well, I pick something out of a, a jar and then I put it back in the jar and then I pick again. So in both cases, I can pick the same thing out of it, but the order matters. Another choice is to say, no, order doesn't matter. Okay, so I can have repetition, but it's the same prize. They're not gonna get anywhere. And so um, that's called a bag, okay? So the order doesn't matter, so it's called a bag. Now, if repetitions are not allowed, if repetitions are not allowed, then it's called a permutation, okay? You have some objects, usually we look at numbers, one, two, three, up to some number N, and then we say, uh, the way that they show up, I'm going to pick a number and then each of them is picked, but the order matters in the way it's picked. If the order is, I'm sorry, if now if we have no repetitions and order doesn't matter, it's called a set. Okay, so we'll do examples for all of these again. Now, these come out because there are different answers to each of these questions. So let's look at examples. I know you've seen this already. Okay, so we're looking, here's, here's our categorization again. And now we have to ask the question, which category do the following problems fit into? Okay, so you're dealing a five card poker hand. It doesn't matter, I don't play poker, so I really don't know this, but you're dealing hand to everybody there and you're dealing five cards to each and they're all hidden. Okay, they're all hidden. Does the order matter? No. Okay, does the order matter? No. Is the repetition? No, there isn't repetition because once a card is dealt, it can't be repeated. Okay, so that's a case where we have um, an unordered list let's say unordered list, no repetition. Which box is that? Let's see, unordered list, it's, that's this column, repetition, no, so that's a set. Okay, set. Dealing a two card blackjack hand, the first one down and the second one up. Okay, so this one, the order matters because everyone sees it, the second card, no one sees the first card. So this is the case where order matters. So we have order. Repetition allowed, no. So what's our case where we have no repetition and order mattered? That's a permutation. What if we are filling up a pinata for a birthday party? Well, that's the classic definition of no order because when they're thrown into this bag, definition of a bag, when they're thrown into the bag, and lots of repetition is allowed. You can't fill up a pinata with just one of each thing. So unordered, repetition allowed. What does that mean? Does order matter? No. Is repetition allowed? Yes. So we're equal to an un, well, we'll just call it a bag. That's the unordered list. Finally, Filling out the game schedule for the jazz. Okay, so what do we have there? Does order matter? Yes, order matters. Is repetition allowed? Do they play the same team more than once? Yes. So what do we have? We have order matters. I'm sorry, repetition is allowed. 
So what's our case where we have unordered? That's over here. Repetition allowed. Yes, that's an unordered list. Wait, wait. Before we had unordered and repetition allowed. This is ordered repetition allowed. Unordered. It also should be ordered their list, right? Unordered repetition allowed was an unordered list or a bag. If it's ordered repetition. Order the list. Thank you. I say the words right, my brain doesn't write them right. Okay, so you're hungry. You need a pinata filled with frozen stuff like burritos and, and hot pockets. Uh, what can I say? Okay, so when we ask how many ways, we have to be able to calculate. So we've named them and now the question is, how can we calculate? How many? So given the set S that has N objects in it, in this case, we're saying we're just numbering them, whatever they are, there are N of them. So the total number of ordered lists, that means we have order matters, repeats aloud. From S of length R is N to the R. Why is that? That's because in the first time that we pick, we're allowed n choices. And the second time we're allowed n choices. And the last time we're allowed n choices. And that's the first, the second, the rth time. So each time we're allowed n choices. So we have n to the r. Now, if you look at that, if you're just looking at binary sequences, and you're asking that question, then our number, our S here becomes zero and one with two elements in it. And we're looking at two of the R different things. Okay, so that's the number of binary sequences with R elements in them. Okay, the total number of permutations, that's ordered lists, no repeats, from S of length R is the number of permutations on R thing of N things taken R at a time. And we write it that way. And that's N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. Has everybody here seen factorial before? Is there anyone who hasn't seen it before? Okay. So the total number of sets, sets. So what's a set? No order, repetition allowed. No repetition allowed, what am I saying? No repetition allowed. No order, no repetition um, of our items taken from S is the number, this is called combinations. And it's the number of combinations of N things taken R at a time. Okay, so that's the number of permutations of n things taken r at a time divided by r factorial. And it looks like this. Now, what that does is it says, well, if I pick two things, if r is equal to two, then one, two is equal to two, one. So the combinations there say I'm talking about them as a set. So the order, the set one, two is the same as the set two, one. Unordered lists. Well, we're getting there, I think. Okay, so the combinations count equivalence classes. So what you're doing is you're saying, let me look at all the permutations 
and the elements in the permutations that are all the same, I'm looking at them and saying they all count the same. Okay, they all go into one group of permutations and a different one goes into a different group of permutations. Okay, so let's think about that for a second. The number of permutations of n things, n things taken n at a time, that means we're using everything is equal to n factorial over n minus n factorial. And remember n minus n factorial, zero factorial is one. So that's just n factorial. But the number of combinations of n things taken n at a time. Well, remember we just said we're using all of the numbers. So if I'm using all of the numbers, then there's only one set containing all of the numbers and our computation figures it out. It's n factorial n minus r, n minus n factorial times n factorial, which is just one. Okay, so there's only one set that contains all of the numbers. Okay. Now let's look at this differently. Suppose we have uh, three elements set, let's say ABC. Okay, and I want to know the number of combinations. I wanna know the number of permutations of the three elements taken two at a time. So then I can pick A and B, A and C, B and C, but I can also pick B and A, C and A, C and B. Okay, so as permutations, there are six of them. Okay, so P of three, two equals six. Well, our formula tells us that already. Now, what is C of three, two? Well, I look at that and in combinations as sets, AB equals BA, AC equals CA, and BC equals CB. I shouldn't say equals. They're in the same equivalence class because they have exactly the same elements in the set. Okay, I use the term equivalence class for real. What was our definition of equivalence class? Equivalence relation? Oh, an equivalence relation is relation that's reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. You need to remember that. We have an exam coming up here. So equivalence class would be the set of all elements related to one another? An equivalence class is the set of all elements related to one another, yes. Remember, an equivalence class creates a partition of the subsets. So in this case, we see those two are related. These two are related to each other. These two are related to each other. Okay. All right. Now, when we're counting, these problems can get very complex. So in the case that they're very complex, what we try and do is break it down into simpler examples. And then we try and use the formulas we know on the simple examples and then build up the complex ones. So what are examples of that? Well, there's the rule of products that says if each entry in a list can be created by selecting one of X objects and then one of Y objects, then the list has a total of X, Y entries. So what might be an example of that? Well, an example of that might be, suppose I'm creating a list uh, of two objects, say uh, A is equal to the numbers from one to 10 
and B is equal to the letters A, B, C, D, E. One to nine, forget the 10. Okay. And then the first one I can pick, the first one I have a choice of picking from A and the second one is from B. Okay. So then we're looking and saying, well, the first one I have nine choices from A and then I have five choices from B. So how many different combinations can I have? Well, then I'm looking and saying I have 45 possible combinations. Okay, nine times five. So we broke the problem down. We said, oh, well, the first one is always a nine, one zero and a nine. The second one is a five, five choices. Okay. Good. Um, or let's call it the simple rule of thumbs. That says if a list can be split into two disjoint pieces. Dane, yes, what's your question? Uh, I have a question about, so you said if each entry in a list can be created by the product rule stuff. Yes. A list so does list mean set in this case, or does list mean something which we can have this is ordered. repeated elements? Particularly, ordered. what do we have here? Okay, I'm sorry, if I don't call it, I said ordered list, okay? So does order matter? If we call it an unordered list, it's a bag. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So the product rule is only applying to ordered lists. Uh, let's look at that in a minute and see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So the rule of sum says we're going to split the problem into two disjoint pieces of size. First one is X. Second one is Y. Then the original list has X plus Y entries. For disjoint sets A and B, this means that the number of elements in the union is equal to the sum of the elements in each case. We'll do examples of each of these. And then we have the rule of sums with overlap. This is the case where we can't split it into two disjoint pieces. That we can split it into each pieces, but they have Z objects in common. And this uses the rule of inclusion exclusion. Okay, so that says the number of elements in the union is equal to the number of elements in each one summed together minus the ones we counted twice, the ones in the intersection. And finally, we have the rule of complement. And the rule of complement says, you know, when I'm trying to figure out how many, sometimes it's easier to figure out how many are in the total problem and not how many are in the part I wanna find, but how many are in the complement of what I want. And then I subtract one from the other like that. And that way I know what my answer is. I take the total number of possible things and then subtract off the ones I don't want. So let's look at some examples. Oh, first we'll look at the rules. So another way of thinking that that way was one way of, another way of thinking is suppose you have two separate tasks. Okay. And you have to do both of them. Okay, A can be done in M ways and B can be done in N ways. And then the sum can be done in M plus N ways. Then A and B. Okay. If there are two subsequent tasks, subsequent means um, I do one and then I do the other and then I do one. And so the subsequent means it's ordered. Okay, the word subsequent is, is giving you an ordering. Then if there are M ways to do task A and N ways to do task B, then you have M times N ways to do the whole task. Okay, so let's pick a simple example. I see people are hungry. We're talking about yummy food. So let's pick a case. You're building a sandwich from the bottom up. 
okay? And we're allowing some flexibility in the choice, but not a lot here. So we're saying, well, you can first choose bread. So you can pick white, whole wheat, sourdough, or rye. So we have four choices of bread, one, two, three, four, four choices of bread. You can pick, I say meat, but that means you can pick uh, chicken, turkey, ham, steak, or tuna. If you're vegetarian, I should add uh, cheese, let's say. Okay, so if I add cheese, we have one, two, three, four, five, six choices of, the, let's say, the protein in it. Uh, you can choose just one vegetable. So if you're picking one vegetable, you can pick lettuce, tomato, cucumber, or onion. So we have four choices for vegetable. And then you can choose the top bread. Okay, you like something different. You want all vegetables. I can't help it. Um, so you have one, two, three, four. Okay, so six ways to pick meat, protein. So we're looking at this choice of things and we're saying, how many different sandwiches can you build? Okay, so how many can you build? Well, you're picking subsequent tasks here. So that's a multiply. So we had four for the bread, the bottom bread, six for the top bread, I would say for the protein, four for the vegetable and four for the top bread. So let's see, this is not the right answer anymore, but you do the multiplication, okay? They're independent of each other. It doesn't matter. I could pick a different bottom piece of bread and pick the same choice of protein. Okay, David, what is your question? How would it change it if you could swap the vegetable and the meat and the inside of the sandwich? Independent, doesn't matter actually. If you wanna pick your vegetable first, that's okay. Okay, but there's an ordering that doesn't matter which one. What we have here is a list of one, two, three, four things and we're having different things in each of those slots and they don't depend on each other, right? You can only pick one thing so you can't have all vegetables. How could she choose between meat and cheese? That's the problem. This, this restaurant only allows you to pick one. What can I say? All right, let's try a different practice problem. So you wanna make a license plate with three even numbers. Now that's digits from zero to nine and three letters. Or you wanna make one with two numbers, two numbers, two letters, one odd number, one even number and two vowels. So those are the same, those are the same, those are the same and those are the same, oops. Not true. What do we have? Two numbers, two letters, an odd number, an even number, and two vowels. Okay. Ah, all letters, but they're not the same. Okay. Now, in a license plate, order matters. If my license plate were all numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's different than six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So order matters on these license plates. But this license plate says those three are numbers. Okay. Dane, what's your question? Uh, when we say three even numbers, we're talking about one digit numbers, right? One digit, absolutely. Okay. Zero, so the numbers, numbers are zero, one, two, up to nine. Um, and the uh, letters are the alphabet, A, B, up to Z. Okay, 
Give it a try. So first the question allow repetition. I'm sorry, what? So for the three even numbers and the three letters, this is allowed the repetition. It's a what? Allow repetition. Like uh, they have three same number. Yes, we allow repetition. Thank you for asking that. Okay. Oh, I better take, I'm going to give you quote a five minute break, but you're supposed to work on this problem during the break. Yes, David. So I, I did have some questions I didn't ask at the beginning of class. There were some questions on the pre-lecture quiz. I just couldn't hear. I, couldn't I actually have one of the problems from the pre-lecture quiz that I have in a practice problem here that I hope we get to. Yeah, because there was one about like uh, equivalence classes that I didn't get. And there was one about picking marbles from a bag. The marbles uh, from the bag one is the one I have. Yeah, are we going to talk about equivalence classes today? Is that? Uh, if you tell me what problem it is, I could do it next class. I, I didn't have that one prepared, so I don't even remember the problem. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't in the pre-lecture either, so it took me a long time to do it. But it was question 11 on the lecture problems. So this is pre-lecture. Uh, so this lecture. is lecture 15. Lecture 15, question 11. Okay, we'll do it next class, okay? We'll cover the marbles today, I hope. Thank you. Someone asked about the marbles last night, so I threw that into the lecture. I'm hoping to get to it. Excuse me, professor? Yes. I'm just want to not make sure if it's zero or is an even number. Zero is an even number. Great, thank you. Someone asked if Y is considered a vowel. So I actually used it as a vowel, but you don't have to. If you did it the other way, we'll talk about what the differences are in this problem solution for each way. It's an honorary vowel. You know, I mean, what I always learned is it's A-E-I-O-U and sometimes Y. Yeah, but there's no rule. What can I say? English is a tough language. It can never decide what it wants to do. Okay, we ready to jump back? So let's ask the question, how are we gonna solve this problem? So how many choices do we have for the first slot here? That has to be an even number. The even number, if it includes zero, is like I'm supposed to Yes, yeah, so even numbers include zero. 
by five even number in from zero to nine? Yes. How many even numbers? There are five. So we have five choices. Five choices for the first slot. And how many choices do we have for the second slot? Um, 25. Right. And how many choices for the third slot? Third slot should be five. five. Right. So for the number, the three digit number, we have five times five times five or 125 choices. So this is 125 choices. Now, now we have the numbers and now we have the three letters we have to choose from. Okay, so the first slot in the numbers, in the letters, how many do we have as a choice? 26. 26. Because the How many for the second slot? Same. 26. For the third slot, 26. So for the last three, we have 26 cubed. So how many license plates can we make this way? We can make 100 and, well, it's really, five cubed times 125 cubed. This is an example. What's this an example of? We broke it into two parts. Excuse They're independent me. of each other. Three numbers, which is ordered. You mean 26 cubed, right? 20, yes. Uh, sorry about that. I have no, a problem. Guy. Brain, brain hand connection, 26 cubed. Yes, thank you. Okay, so lots of license plates. Now suppose the scheme for the license plate is different. This, oh, thank you for doing that calculation. Um, I don't know what you get, but it's five cubed times 26 cubed. Okay, so now we have two numbers and they can be anywhere between zero and nine. We have two letters, one odd number, one even number, and two vowels, okay? So we have two numbers, and so we have a choice of 10 for the first place and 10 for the second place. They're not even now, they're just 10. And then we have two letters, so we have 26 choices and then 26 choices. And then we had one odd number. How many odds did we have? We had five. And now we have one even number. How many of those? Well, we have five of them and two vowels. So I did the problem allowing Y to be a vowel. So there were six and six, but if you do the problem allowing, not allowing Y to be a vowel, then you have five and five. So that gives us, what is that total? That's 10 squared times 26 squared times five for the odd numbers times five for the even numbers times six squared or five squared. Wait, um, could I ask a question? Sure. Why is six for wow and AEI will use five, right? Uh, A E I O U and Y. And Y? Oh, yeah, so I counted Y as a vowel because sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Yeah. It's like when you do how many days in a year you have to leave out February 29th. Uh -huh. um, if you want 365 or else it's 366. So sometimes you say one or the other, depending upon if it's a leap year or not. So it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for for okay. I understand English is painful. <laughs> I understand also that many languages are worse um, on the number of letters. But thank you. <laughs> Schrodinger's vowel is it there or not? Okay, now we have to have six letters that are not the same. Okay, no repetition, order matters. What's that? 
permutation. A, permutation, very good. So we have 26 choices for the first, 25 for the second, 24 for the third, 23 for the fourth, 22 for the fifth, and 21 for the sixth. And that's actually equal to the number of permutations of 26 things taken six at a time. Okay, that's because 26 factorial over 26 minus 21, I'm sorry, minus five factorial, minus five all factorial is equal to 26 times 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 times 21 times 20 factorial, all divided by 20 factorial. So the factorials with left cancels and we're left with exactly what we came out with. Dane, yes, what's your question? Uh, is it 26 minus six factorial in the denominator? Oh, of six, the yes, thank you. Okay. Wow. You got me. I was thinking vowels again. Yeah, that's how we got 20 factorial there. Thank you. Yeah, well, good. Yeah, it's the biggest number because there are more letters than numbers available to us. Okay. Let's do another practice problem. We're going to roll a six-sided die. That's a regular old die. Um, three times. One, two, three. And we record the result as an ordered list of length three. How many outcomes have exactly one one? So let's ask the question first, what are the possible members of the list? Uh, so we have the set A is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, how many choices are there for the first? We have six there are six choices. choices. And six choices and six choices. So we have six cube choices for the number of possible dies. Now, we can take this question apart by saying, well, suppose we roll, suppose we roll a one in the first location. And we want exactly one, one. So how many choices do I have for the, for the second location? Six. No, five. I can't roll oh, a one again. Yeah, yeah, five, okay. Good. How many choices for the third? Five. Five. So that gives me 25 choices. Now, suppose I roll a one in the second location. Could I have rolled a one in the first one? No, because I said there's only one one altogether. So I had five choices for the first location and five choices for the third location. So that says I have 25 choices for that. The third one says I'm rolling a one in the last location. So I could not have rolled a one in the first and I could not have rolled a one in the second. So that gives me 25 choices. So altogether, how many ways can I roll a one in any of the three spots, but exactly one one? 75. Well, we add all three of those cases. We don't multiply them because it matters. They're separate. So we have 75 choices altogether. Okay, now six cubed is 36 times six is bigger. Okay, so that tells us that 
you know, exactly one one shows up not that many times relative to the number of cases we have. Okay. Practice problem five here. Uh, you know, let me jump. Let me jump to talking about combinations. We'll go back to the other problems, but I want to hit the marble problem today. So remember, in combinations, order doesn't matter. and Repetitions are not allowed. Now, when I say repetitions are not allowed, it means like the permutations. Well, first of all, A, B, and C, and B, A, C are different in permutations, but not in combinations, not in sets. It's the same set. And in combinations, what... So seven, three combinations of seven things taken three at a time is seven factorial over seven minus three factorial times four factorial and seven, four is equal to seven factorial divided by seven minus four factorial times Three, I've got these the wrong way here. Now, times um, n minus r times r. Times four factorial. And if I look carefully, what do we see? Well, seven minus three is four and seven minus four is three. So we see that for any factorial, the number of combinations of n things taken k at a time is exactly the same as the number of combinations of n things taken n minus k at a time. Okay, and that's because that's what we get when we look at that. Okay, now let's jump into marbles. We have a bag containing five red marbles and six white marbles. How many ways, <coughs> excuse me, can four marbles be drawn from the bag? Um, and then we ask, how many ways can four marbles be drawn from the bag if there are two must be red and two must be white? And finally, how many ways can four marbles be drawn from the bag if they all must be the same color? Okay, I think that's a problem a lot of people seem to have issues with. So let's look at this and say four marbles. Does anybody want to, well, okay, you've all tried this already. So we have four marbles here. Well, how many marbles do we have all together? So we have all together We have uh, five plus six equals 11 marbles. Okay, so when we say four marbles are drawn, we don't care about the order. So uh, order doesn't matter. And there's no repetition. So that's a set. So I'm looking at set equals combinations of 11 things taken four at a time is 11 factorial over um, seven factorial. That's 11 minus four times four factorial. Okay. Britain, yes. So how do we how do we know that like order doesn't matter in this case? Or the way the question's being asked. Because it doesn't ask you, it doesn't say anything about the order. It just says <clears throat> that you're saying four marbles, I don't care. Just draw four marbles. 
and tell me how many, how many ways can you do it? Now, if you tell me, um, I don't know what you tell me. We're not saying how many are red or how many are blue, or red or white or anything else. We're just saying how many ways can you draw four marbles? But could, couldn't like a way be defined as like an order? Like you draw a white one and then you draw four red ones and another way to draw the four marbles is to draw them in a different order. It would be if I cared about order on this problem. So I guess it just needs to be a little bit more clear in the way the questions ask. Um, well, yes and no. I mean, let's look at the second one. How many ways can four marbles be drawn from the bag if two must be red and two must be white? Now we're not asking to say the first two are red or the first two are white and then the second two. So the order doesn't matter. It just says you're drawing four out of a bag and when you're done, you wanna know, okay, how many of those choices have two red and two white? Okay. Would it be so you're not saying choose. the first two red and the second two white or the first and third red and the second and fourth white. Okay. So are we treating each marble as if it's like associated to like a number, like each, each red marble is unique? We are not treating this as if, look at this, we're not treating this as if we have two marbles and allow repetition. We're not allowing repetition. The marbles are drawn. We're taking four marbles out. Okay. But essentially, what so I'm after you take the first marble, I'm not asking you, after I take one marble, if it's red, what's my choice of getting a possibility of getting a red or a white one? That's a different problem. And we will talk about that as well. So just the way that you like add, so five plus six equals 11. You're like saying that there's 11 different possibilities. So to me, that means- that No, like, I'm saying there are 11 marbles. I don't know. I've got a bag with 11 marbles in it. Right, yeah. Okay. And each of those- and I'm picking four out. How many different ways can I pick four out? Yeah, so the each of those 11 is like kind of unique in itself. And so to me, that that means that it's just a little confusing because like, the red marbles, to me, those are all, since you say that there's five red marbles, those, those each um, kind of have their own like characteristic of red. And besides yes. that, they're not like distinct. And then you have like the white marbles and those are kind of their own characteristic of white. And beyond that, there's not any distinction. That's kind of how it seems with the way the question's asked. But when you, when the way you're solving it, you're kind of acting as though each of the marbles has like an associated number almost. It's the same kind of problem. If you were asked, you're dealing five cards in the poker hand, you're dealing five cards. Okay. How many ways can someone get uh, three diamonds and two hearts? Okay, now we know they're all different, but when I say three diamonds and two hearts, I'm not asking you uh, the ace, king, queen of diamonds or, or whatever. I'm just saying three diamonds and two hearts. And I'm not asking you which one came first. I'm saying it's down, you pick up your hand and you're looking at it, it's unsorted. How many have three diamonds and two hearts, no matter what they're called? Does that make sense? You understand that 52 cards in the deck are different, but they're only four suits. So essentially, if I'm understanding correctly, if I pull out like two um, red marbles um, that if I pull out two red marbles, that's different than pulling out two different other red marbles. And we're treating those as two different outcomes. And that when we ask how many different ways are there? Yep. yep. It is then, two different outcomes. Yeah. 
so that's i guess that's why it's just confusing to me is because like in the question the only specific like the only difference i'm sorry that I'm, ha between... I'm happy to talk about it with you but i'd like to finish this we're already over time yeah i'd like to to finish this okay okay um okay so then the second part is how many ways can four marbles be drawn if two must be red and two must be white again order doesn't matter but if i have to pick two red ones how many ways can i pick two red ones. Well, how many red ones are there? There are five red ones and I'm picking two at a time. How many white ones are there? Six white marbles, two at a time. Do I multiply them together? Yes. That's a multiply together. How many ways, if you think of them as how many hands can you get in cards, it's the same problem. You can think of them as all different, but they're red. And the red is the only characteristic that you're caring about. Okay, so this is the number of ways you can pick up two red. That's, that's a five, not a three, I'm sorry. And two white. Now, how many ways can four marbles be drawn from the bag if all must be the same color? So, if I want to pick all red ones, then I have C, five, four. And if I pick all white ones, it's C of six, four. Do I multiply that together? Are they each part of one answer or are they separate answers? They're separate answers. So I add them. The total number of ways is the sum. Yes, Dane, and then we're over time. So last question is Dane's. Dane. And C, in the second part, C choose, or five choose two times six choose two. Yes. Um, do we have to divide by two in that? Why would I divide by two? Uh, there's two ways uh, to pick the first, whether which color I'm gonna pick first. Ah, that's what, C means it's not permutations, it's sets. That's the combinations versus permutations. Mm, okay. Okay. Thanks. Good. All right. Well, I think we better let everyone go. Um, thank you for coming today. Your quiz is Thursday. It's on chapter four, all the sections we talked about. Uh, remember, you have to sign the pledge. Remember what the pledge says, no academic misconduct here. I want you all to do well. Um, okay, you're allowed your one cheat sheet, that's it. You're not allowed to look up on the internet for answers. You're not allowed to talk to each other about the problems. Remember that. Uh, Dane, put your hand down, please. <laughs> um, okay, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, Thursday, it's good luck. Work hard. Um, and uh, bye. <laughs>